I have four key concepts. These are ideas that help you think about the process of keeping an ecosystem aquarium and help you with the continued success. Number one, if in doubt, change it out or dilution is the solution. What I'm saying is it resets the balance and lets you start again. Now when I kept the reef tank, I was trying not to do water changes and what I was doing is I ended up running carbon and phosphates and dosing this and that and the other and it became very convoluted and in the end I realised it was much cheaper and more effective just to change water. Number two, the balance of light, CO2 and nutrients are the key to balancing the ecosystem. And concept three, it's not just plants in your aquarium, that's the key to this balance, it's plant growth. When plants are growing, then they absorb the nutrients out of the water, which lets you go longer without water changes. And number four, I like to think of the aquarium, the ecosystem aquarium, as the recycling plant and the engine. And the recycling plants, you've got your soil, you've got the cap, and you've got your root feeding plants. Now what they do is as the waste drops down, anything, it, as it breaks down, it releases nutrients and CO2 in the water and your stem plants, your floating plants and your water column, that's your engine and what they do is they run the ecosystem by absorbing all the nutrients and the CO2 and the light and that's what creates your ecosystem. Let's look at plants as the cornerstone of our ecosystem aquarium just as the filtration system is the cornerstone of a traditionally filtered aquarium. If the plants aren't growing then the engine's not running and basically the fuel is building up inside the aquarium this fuel, which basically can be toxic to the invertebrates and fish. Say for argument's sake we have an Amazon sword in our aquarium and we just planted it and it needs to convert into its submerged state. It's going to melt away with all its old leaves and use all its stored energy to grow new leaves and roots to help it establish its new life underwater. This is going to leave the Amazon sword in an energy negative state. It's used all its resources to create all this new stuff to create all these new leaves and roots and it needs a balanced aquarium so it can recharge all its energy that it's used now remember plants don't have a credit card they can't go out and buy stuff they've got a savings account basically now it's going to store energy with its new leaves and new roots it's going to use that balanced aquarium to build up its savings account again and then at one point it's going to say to itself well I've got enough energy stored to maintain myself now I can use this extra energy to create new growth. Can we help our aquarium plants with this process to become super savers? Well indeed we can. First off with my soil mix what I tend to use is 50% organic topsoil like medical grow organic and then I use 30% Akadama and 20% compost. This promotes nutrient production as well as oxygen exchange or gas exchange at the roots and due to Akadama's unique plant structure we can create a little side hustle for our roots. Akadama helps to keep the soil structure open letting gas exchange into the roots. Now it's true that aquatic plants can survive in anoxic conditions for a period of time however in a highly oxygenated substrate they won't just survive they'll thrive in a highly oxygenated substrate the beneficial bacteria will also thrive and this will help break down nutrients that the roots can absorb furthermore because of Akadama's unique structure it's got a high cation exchange capacity which means it can hold the nutrients available for the plant roots until the plant roots absorbs them and then because of its unique structure there's tiny little tubes through the structure and what happens is the plant roots can grow into that structure and as the plant roots thicken they'll break the Akadama into smaller pieces exponentially increasing the cation exchange capacity of the Akadama and ramifying the roots what this means is as the Akadama breaks down the roots split and they ramify so you get more and more little fine feeder roots so it exponentially increases the cation exchange capacity or the CEC of the Akadama and it makes the plant roots more effective at absorbing these nutrients which adds in turn adds to the savings account. Now what happens with our plants above the soil tends to 
be mirrored underneath the soil and vice versa. So if we've got a good light balance of light, energy, nutrients, CO2, and the plants aren't doing much, they're not doing much growing, the chances are there's a problem with the root structure. Now obviously we can't use Akadama at the top of the plant, what we can use is scissors. If we regularly prune our stem plants, we do something called bifurcation. Now I could talk about this in terms of ap apical meristems and oxen, the hormone, but all I'll say is when you cut it, you'll get two stems from one, and then if you cut it again, you'll get four from two and eight from four, and it just goes on that way. Remember though, every time we prune our plants, we put it back into a negative energy state, and it needs to replenish this energy before it'll continue to grow again. Though in the long run, because of bifurcation and ramification, we're building healthier and healthier plants that can absorb more and more nutrients and store more and more energy. And another important and another important thing to consider, if you've got a plant such as an Amazon sword and its leaves are dying, the plants will try and use its stored energy to repair that leaf and we're better off just cutting it off because then it'll just it'll compartmentalise the wound and that'll be it done, it'll restore its energy and it'll put it into growing more healthy leaves or roots, whatever it needs to balance. 